Um, you might be asking yourself, what is this monstrosity? It, it looks like some sort of horrible blob monster from a 1940s B sci-fi horror film made of... Um, I actually don't know what this is. Nylon, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh god, it's gonna be one of those types of reviews. So this is an old Alice pack. I have actually had this for... I think longer than any of the other backpacks that I've had. Um, I never used it. Uh, this was not intended to be a hiking or what I would refer to as a leisure pack. Um, I got this for 50 bucks off the internet for the purposes of a, a government appreciation bag. If you don't know what that is, it's very similar to a, uh, those deplorable types. They would say a bug out bag, but as we all know, they are non-persons and, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever. I would never associate with those types. Uh, I would never. You know, uh, ideologically, I'm. I'm completely separate from those people. If you've ever played the game The Division, uh, you notice that there is a uh, government agent that is on an agency that has no oversight, uh, that is able to uh, kill citizens at will without habeas corpus or due process. Uh, he goes around just sort of taking things from people's apartments in New York and I guess now in Washington D.C. And um, that's what a government appreciation bag is. You want to have as much stuff set aside as possible so when a government agent who has the ability to kill at will without habeas corpus or, or due process, when they come along, they'll, they're able to kind of benefit from the things that you've put aside. So wanting to be a good citizen, I wanted to put one of these together. Um, if you were a deplorable, you would possibly consider this as a cheap uh, bag to be used for bug out purposes. But um, I wouldn't recommend that. Because I, uh, I disagree with the idea that you would ever, that the government would not always be there to help you. Alright, enough of that, um, talk. That <coughs> 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 was actual cough. <laughs> anyway, I got this a thousand years ago. I don't even remember off of what site. I'm pretty sure... Might have been Amazon, might have been, um, eBay. And uh, I think I got it for 50 bucks. This is an Alice pack. I'm not as studied on it as I should be, but you know how Tolstoy do. Tolstoy just talk about a thing and then he learns from being shouted at. So, hey, if you ever carried one of these, if you were ever in the military and you carried one of these, you are too old to be watching a YouTube video. You are too old to be watching a Tolstoy video. What are you doing? Oh, crap. Yeah, she's kind of back heavy. She has a tendency to want to fall forward and unless you lean her up against the dang wall, against something. She has a tendency to want to lean backwards. You little fucking bitch, get up against the goddamn wall, blat. <sighs> okay. Anyway, um, I did look on or I did look on Wikipedia to kind of research this. Um, as I understand, uh, these were in service from uh, basically Vietnam up through the Gulf War, and it's part of a larger system of uh, gear altogether, making up a suit that essentially comprises all the things that you would need on the battlefield. Um, uh, Alice, uh, all-purpose, lightweight, something, carry equipment. I don't, yeah, I don't remember, I don't remember the whole acronym, but essentially it got replaced later by stuff like this. Um, the, this is known as Molly, and that actually is also an acronym that I don't understand, but essentially you can use this to attach things. It, it is a modular system for attaching, uh, pouches, uh, equipment to your your loadout, your carry. A uh, great example of this, and I have yet to show this off, a um, friend of mine who was an airborne combat medic threw this together for me for a Christmas present, and uh, I haven't attached this to... Well, let's just say you may or may not see the review of what this gets attached to, but I feel like this is, this is something I would show you. Um, this is a straight-up 100% official army... Uh, army... Ar army approved trauma kit. And he made sure that I knew how to use this stuff. Uh, one of the things that he taught me about the, um, the tourniquet and how to apply that as fast as humanly possible is if you, if the pain from the tourniquet is not worse from the, than the pain from the wound you are attempting to treat, you are not saving the subject's life. But anyway, that is a cool bit of kit. But as you can see, as most people who've ever played Airsoft, Call of Duty, or have ever actually been in the military will tell you, uh, yeah. It's a modular system. You use... Huh, wait a second. How do I attach this to a... Fuck. But this is an older precursor to that system. It looks ugly as sin, but the one thing it's got going for it, maybe, is... Uh, I don't really know the name of this, but it's like... Uh, I don't know. Antique military chic. 
Uh, you play games like Metro, you play games like Stalker, um, even stuff like in The Last of Us. It's this kind of second-hand camping, cheap-ass, you know, camping store, second-hand military store, gun show, you know, uh, gear that you see on most of the characters in games like that or in stuff like The Walking Dead. It is an older and very tried system. And it definitely has an old-world, kind of rustic look to it. Uh, it has that 1960s, 1970s, post-apocalyptic feel. Um, part of why it's like that is because this is a, you know, a very much used Atlas pack, and uh, it has seen many, 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 many soldiers, I assume, who have, you know, worn this thing and tossed this thing. You can actually see right here, there's some kind of, either this was a patch, or somebody had to patch up a hole, and they just kind of, I don't know, sewing machine the shit out of that, you know, somewhere back at base. So the Alice Pack is kind of um, an extension of three, it's an extension of like the old World War II design. Um, a lot of you, if you had watched my review of the Mystery Ranch Rip Rock Pack, will remember that I was talking kind of about this and about how this was a more modern update of older designs kind of like this. Although this one is more closely related to the old World War II designs that most of the military back then used for their backpacks, two pockets, whereas the Alice was three pockets. That's some straight up, you have three PS3s, I have four PS3s, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know why back then they didn't assume to put an extra pocket on that some bitch. So basically, you have one big main pouch that has a flap over top of it with these straps that run all up and down the pack and can kind of get re-looped in back here. Really possibly providing a lot of utility. Really think about the design. These extra straps are super freaking handy. Um, you could possibly add in like more clothing and more gear here and even though I already have like a little bundle attached here I could secure in yet another bundle that's um I, I have to admit as ugly as this thing is the people who thought about how this was going to work actually really thought about how this was going to work um, we'll go over that more later um, the model that I got came with a frame oh, oof so as you can see, uh, I know that there are Alice packs that you can get that have no frame, and I'm pretty sure you could remove the frame off of this. I'm never going to do that. That is not a thing that's ever going to happen. So you can see it has two, two padded straps here, and it has on the frame a big wedge right here that is basically going to sit on your... Um, on your back, your lower back. It is a tramp stamp, you know, pad. It's a padding for your for your tramp stamp when you feel like getting one of those. So I bought this with the frame. It cost a little bit extra. I think without the frame, you can possibly get these suckers for like 25 bucks. 50 bucks, pay the extra 25. The frame is excellent. I'm not even gonna lie about that. On the side, there's some extra there's some extra little hoops here, and I'm not sure if that is just for the stability of the pack or if that was meant to add extra crap on. Either way, I used it to attach by just simply tying on there my, um, I should probably untie this, my, um, hammock. The hammock that I bought, which, by the way, one review, one day is coming eventually when I can actually get it together. When, when the weather stops acting insane, I want to go out there, get some camping done. Uh, this was bought with Patreon money. So I really actually want to thank my patrons. Uh, I don't know why you guys fluctuate a lot. Uh, the number goes up and down a lot, but it, it doesn't matter. You did not have to give me money, and you gave me money, and I want to bring you a cool gear review. However, you know that a polar vortex, two separate polar vortexes, hit our country, and there were multiple deaths associated with it. Uh, now, I know the South was not affected, but, man, I'm not going to be out there in a hammock in 40-degree weather. I'm not that badass. I'm really sorry. This is not the gray, okay? We're not going once more into the fray, son. Let's turn this thing back around. So, um, in order to get a better look at the pack, I'm probably going to take this little bundle off, but I, I just wanted to make, make mention real quick right here. Um, so these straps, right? These, these are a thing that I don't see enough in modern-day backpack design, and I don't know why, but modern-day, but hey, you know, Osprey, uh, you know, Black Diamond, uh, Patagonia, Unfuck thyself. Get these straps, son. Quit hating and get these straps. So this little blanket here, this is a crappy little camouflage Walmart blanket. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a fan of camouflage, really. In fact, for the most part, uh, I really like earth, dark earth colors. These greens 
I really don't really like these green 511s, but I already paid the damn $50 for them a long time ago. They're a little, eh, whatever, I don't really care. They do the job, as long as it does the job, but that being said. Um, my brother just bought this for me at a Walmart once, and to be perfectly honest, it was just nice to have something that I, was super lightweight that I could just carry in my backpack. I mean, worse comes to worse, it acts as a damn towel. I mean, I, you can throw it away. It was probably like less than $10, but it came super in handy one time, but we can't really talk about that time because I don't want to be obscene on YouTube. Anyway, long story short, this is my old hiking pack, which is, I mean, we've been over this long, uh, many, many times. Anyone who's seen any of my work can tell you that while this thing was actually, it's an old SOG pack that had a bladder built in. While this thing it was super customizable and uh, actually really serviceable, uh, I don't know, man. It was just, uh, it was a little edgelordy. All the molly and the, that digit camo. Mmm. Mmm, son. Actually, but the one thing about it, these straps at the bottom, these help me to secure this. And ideally, because of the, the size of these straps, you could even add on, you know, more. You could add on an entire bedroll. And obviously that was the purpose that they had in mind when they made this. And uh, I think that's the bee's knees. So I'm going to loosen these strips a bit. Loosen up my... Okay, loosening the straps is not all that easy, and I don't know why I just all of a sudden adopted an Australian accent. There we go. Yeah, uh, all the buckles on this are a little bit, you know, old and rusty. I don't know what, what you would expect. It's possibly a 30-year-old piece of equipment. You know, this thing was probably made before I was born. God, I don't want to be 30! <laughs> anyway, so let's just get that sucker out of there. And there's my shitty little blanket, but it could hold more. And that is one of the biggest problems that I've had, which is what I was trying to solve with a nice, compact, lightweight hammock. You know what I'm saying? Was what to do if I want to camp. Because as much of an outdoorsman as I am, I always do day hikes. I've actually not since, you know, reaching adulthood have I camped on my own. Uh, and that bums me out. Soon to change, though. You know, one of the good things about all the... The things you haven't done is it leaves you stuff to achieve. There's more, always more goals to achieve in the RPG of life. So now you get a better, clear picture of the blob. The big blob pack. The Alice blob. Three pockets. Big ass main pocket. That is the be That is the greatest amount of division that I need. That's perfect. Um, on this side, one of the other things is that these back pockets are big. Um, these can hold... Analgene and then some. This one I was using, oh yeah, I put all my medical stuff just on this because I, I switched over for the review and by my luck, if I, it's almost like a good luck charm. If I don't bring a thing, then I will need that and therefore I cannot leave behind my medical supplies. I have to keep shifting these in between all these packs that I'm reviewing and the ones that I feel like bringing on a daily basis. I really just need to get a medical bag and then put that a bag within a bag, i.e. bagception. Um, that would at least make it so I could just reach and grab it, toss it in the new backpack and roll out. I think that's what I'll do soon. But what I really liked was I was able to bring my steel clean canteen. This is a two liter steel clean canteen that you can, oh my god, it's cold from being outside and in the car. Oh my god, that's, oh, you could use that as an ice pack, boy. Yeah, I'm putting that right down. Okay. Well, ran into a bit of a problem. Broke out the old clean canteen this morning, which has been kind of rotting in the back of the gear closet for a million years. I ran a scrub brush through it because it had what looked like a little bit of gunk on the bottom, possibly rust, and I hot soapy watered that son bitch. And now, despite having already taken a pretty big slug from it before, I realize that there's that's mold. That ain't rust. It's black mold. I mean, I have the, I have my uh, life straw, which I'm glad I brought. But 
Not today. <laughs> not if I don't have to. So let's put that back. <sighs> Trusty now, Gene. A little under a liter of water, and I might be about halfway through the two mile loop, so. I'm gonna accidentally end up using that light straw. I can tell you that now. <laughs> Getting the water in and out of this, well, now Gene's a bit easier, but it's a bit smaller too. Dang. This thing must be low on battery. Yeah. That's a bummer. That truly sucks. There's an old piece of gear that I got a long ass time ago. Uh, I, I mostly used it when I was still drinking and I needed two liters of water to wake up to every single morning. Do not judge me. I went through a lot, a lot of dark depressing times. So anyway, it is big enough to hold one of those. I've never met another pack that had the capacity to carry one of these, one of these big boys. I've literally seen a Molly equipped bag made to help attach these two modern hiking bags that cost 50 fucking dollars what is wrong with you no i spent 50 fucking dollars that's what the whole pack costs damn anyway getting the flap open though because of the straps and the way that it's designed i get that it was made to secure it down eh, it's a little less than fun essentially rather than just being able to throw it open it kind of has to coil up um, and that makes getting things in and out of this thing a little bit of a pain in the ass. See what I mean? So, this is your main pocket, and this is the open, like, the big mouth of it. Um, and rear, right here you have, like, a drawstring that you can use to kind of, you know, really collapse down, really tighten up on those reins, a la, um, the Black Keys. Tighten up on your reins. Anyway. But getting stuff in and out, it doesn't really give you as much of a wide berth. Like, without that ability to throw open the pack, um, to throw open the little flap, you really kind of have to weasel open. I never feel like I'm truly ever getting it as open as I could. Um, some utility rope that I brought along, uh, and the, at the last second I kind of had to stuff that in there. With the bedroll already on top, that really makes getting in and out of that main pack a bitch. Um, here's my old ass shoes because I was trying to break in a new pair of boots and I thought to myself, you know, if you start getting blistered up, you're going to want your old ass shoes just in case. Just to, just to show you kind of the stuff that, you know, I, you're able to fit in it. Uh, I always bring a thing of alcohol with me. You can even use alcohol to, uh, this is repellent. You can use alcohol to get a fire started. Do not judge me. Fresh water thing. I almost, uh, light straw. I almost had to use this actually because... <laughs> Even though I, I, I'm going to bleach the crap out of this, even though I washed this out the morning before the hike, somehow it had a black mold in it. I'm almost afraid to... All right, let's fuck it. Let's open it up. Well, maybe I overreacted a bit. No, that's either rust or black mold, but either way, that's, uh, that's not supposed to be in there. Extra pair of socks, because, you know, why not? You might need those. Uh, my rain gear. And this, you know, it wasn't looking like raining. Emergency blanket. It was worth its weight in gold. Anyway, I don't know how easy this will be for you to see. Let's just kind of move it at an angle. But, that is what the open mouth of the pack looks like. And there's only one subdivision within that. And there's a little kind of strap right there. And it kind of just makes like a little baby hammock on the inside that separates the main pouch from, you know, whatever you might want to stick in there. So that's another form of subdivision, but it's not hard subdivision. You don't have to unzip anything. There's just a tinier, babier pouch that you could stick. Maybe all of your clothes and then the rest of it is being held in there. And now that we 
There you go. Now that it's light enough, I can kind of just manhandle it, show you exactly what I was talking about earlier. So this is, thing is surprisingly modular. Um, I don't know if that was the point or what the point of these little, you know, uh, I don't know what you would call these things, these little straps right here. Um, but it is surprisingly modular. I actually just realized that the whole lip of the bag is lined with crap like that. It is almost like a precursor to Molly if that's not even what this is. Um, I actually had a trench tool attached to this, but it was hard getting the tool in and out of it. I, you really had to tug, but I had a trench tool attached to this. And like I said, I used this to attach the, uh, the, I used this to attach my hammock, and it held up. It, it stayed on there. It, you know, you'd be surprised what a simple little, you know, divot like that, or whatever you want to call it, a simple little strap like that is good for. I guess you might be asking, you know, how comfortable is that frame? Because let's, let's face it, this does not look comfortable in the slightest, like, this thing is holding onto your tramp stamp, and your back is placed against this. And then there's just this steel frame. And that's it, boyo. Uh, and then you got these straps, which they do not feel like they're going to be... I mean, they're, they're padding in them, but they've been beaten down from years and years and years of use. So, you know, I can hear you asking, is it comfortable? Surprisingly, yes. It is surprisingly comfortable. Um, I hiked... Uh, maybe five miles, which is not a lot, but it's enough to... It, 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 five miles is enough to figure out if there was a problem with your loadout. If your shoes were pinching you after five miles and they were causing a lot of problems, you were going to know about it. Um, the biggest problem that I ran into was... One of these... Ah, uh, this. Well, the little strap on the side for tightening down your frame to your pack. That. My arm kept scraping that. And if I had gone maybe six or seven miles, there would have been more redness in my arm. Um, maybe some irritation, maybe a skin rash, you know. But other than that, very surprising. Um, when you first put it on, you do not think it is going to be comfortable. You definitely feel like, oh my god, there's no way. But even with the surprising... Oh yeah, I gotta get that... Uh, I... <laughs> Oopsie daisy. I left the little... Um, a zip tie attached to it that I used to attach my shitty knockoff GoPro to it. Um, and that worked surprisingly well, despite the fact that all the footage came out, you know, looking at my glorious fucking neck beard. And I've been trying to get it off with my Spider Co. Okay, Revlon nail clippers. Closest that I've got to apply. You know, I really need a good multi tool. I don't like that because I like the idea that like the knife can solve most problems if you know how the proper technique to how to use it. But uh, you know, that physics. By the way, one of the things that you never think that you're gonna need in a backpacking slash survival slash bug out scenario, fucking nail clippers, man. It's one of those things. How do you keep your fingernails trimmed? End of day scenario, you need your freaking nail clippers. Go into the gear closet for some reason. So it's surprisingly comfortable. I mean, I guess it would have to be. You know, you know that soldiers are tough, so you assume that it's, you know, not going to be that it's going to be a, a heinous, uh, a heinous ruck. But it's not really. Um, ultimately, for about half of the price of a, maybe even less, for about a third of the price of a really decent rucksack, this has both the capacity. And the comfort, it has 100% of the capacity, I would say about 65 to 70% of the comfort, which is a really good deal. The question is, is do you care about looking like a, looking like a, a mill sim, you know, as you're hiking around? Um, and trust me, I, I felt a little bit like a doofus. Thankfully, I was at a park that was really unpopulated. I only passed one by one little billy goat. Uh, I don't ever really see me using this. I don't know why I've kept it around. I could probably just sell it, I guess, but I'm not sure I would even be able to make any money off of it. There's a whole bunch of crap that I really have to sell. So that was my review of the Atlas Pack. Let me know in the comments uh, anything that I missed about this. I'm sure that I missed a lot. Because um, I am not... Um, I am not of the military persuasion. Uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, here's how another modular piece. It's so very weird and foreign. It almost feels like a a piece of foreign tech, if that makes any sense. Like from an alien species. This this is the weirdest buckle design I've ever seen. And I don't know if you can even see this, but 
It's very similar to, uh, and I don't even know what the name of that kind of clip that buckle is. You know what I'm talking about? That has the three fingers. I think that was originally designed in Sweden. You know, your standard issue, the, the trident. We're going to call it the trident from now on. This is like the, whatever two would be, the two dent. It's in this little, little clip, and you can unbuckle it, and it's like, well, what did I get for this? Whoa, fuck, it's a panic strap. Okay. Well, and now we know. And now I don't know if I can put that back together. Yes, you can. Don't be, don't be special, Tolstoy. Use your, use your big boy deduction. There you go. Okay. That was the weirdest way that you could have possibly designed that. I don't understand why the the three prong system did that not exist during the 1970s. And it's only on the one strap. I guess you would only need one to free yourself from it, I suppose. Um, for those of you who don't know, panic straps are there in case this gets caught on something and you desperately need to get out of it. This is holding you and you need to get off, get the pack off of you immediately, uh, but you don't have the ability to take it off uh, the old-fashioned way. This is supposed to unbuckle so that you can throw it off of you faster. Well, I think I've really got to clean up this gear closet. It's starting to look like a damn mess. Stay tuned for more Stalker Let's Plays that nobody will watch. Later, Gopniks. Remember how the game Crash Bandicoot was in development labeled as the uh, Sonic's ass game? Think of these YouTube videos as Tolstoy's ass. That should be all the encouragement you need to watch.